Welcome to Alter. I'm your host, Nicole Moline. This podcast explores the practice of transformation, of growth, as a dance between hustle and flow, altering, changing, growing, becoming, and altering, offering, surrendering, opening to divine conspiracy. It's the dance of the leader, athlete, creator, entrepreneur, committed not just to optimal expression, but to exceptional being. So here are adventures in sweat and divine conspiracy. Awake to all the grit, dirt, and complexity of our world. Alert to the graces that come alongside the struggle, the hustle, encouragement, an infusion of courage for the moments you need it most. I'm your host, Nicole Moline. Welcome to Alter. Hello, beloveds. Lean into this what if. The story you're desperate to hear is the one you're meant to live into and tell. This is an invitation, a dare, spirit whispered to my heart a few years ago, and I've been anchoring into, especially recently, I want to say it right to your heart, to any uncertain, afraid part of you. The story you're desperate to hear is the one you're meant to live into and tell. This vision of living into reminds me of a beautiful passage in the German poet Rilke's book, Letters to a Young Poet. Have patience with everything unresolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves as if they were locked rooms or books written in a very foreign language. Don't search for the answers, which could not be given to you now because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps then, someday, far in the future, you will gradually, without even noticing it, live your way into the answer. Live the questions now, Rilke writes. Much of the wisdom given by teachers is offered after the fact, after they've come through, are are on the other side of a challenge. The cancer survivors sharing their journey, the new mother telling the story of seven IVF treatments, the 50-year-old newlywed. There's a wise piece of advice I heard from a teacher of teachers. Teach from your scars not from your wounds, meaning integrate the journey before you share it. Sift out what should remain sacred to you and what should be shared in service of others. But I'm finding myself lately craving stories of the messy in between, stories of unfulfilled longing, of what it feels like to hold vision and hope for something unlikely, something that remains far off, Stories of creating joy in the empty spaces of grief and desire. Stories of learning how to generate love, discover and practice belovedness from within the longing for its particular expression. So here's mine as it's currently unfolding. The last few months I've been beloveding. That's the word emerging for it. Beloved as a verb, as an action, a practice, a state of mind. I'd like to invite you to join me in a few different ways. I did what felt like a big thing recently and shared on Instagram a post I'll read to you. Deep breath. (laughs) Here goes. I've been single for the last five years. It's been the greatest adventure and biggest heartbreak I could have imagined. Both and... It's what I was taught to believe would be my worst nightmare, biggest failure, most pitiable scenario. Late 30s, early 40s, as the biological clock ticks louder and the patriarchy's valuation metrics of youth and naivete pass expiration dates, 
Phew, cheers to that failure. Yes. I've been calling in the beloved for a good decade and continue to with hope, high standards, humor, and ceremony and befriending the ache, making art of it. I've learned a few things. Spirit has been the great romance of my life. Curiosity is the fountain of youth. The relationship between sexuality and creativity. I have so much to say about this. Also that we are made for a matrix of relationships aside from romantic partnership. For many shades and shapes of love. Rich, long-haul friendships. All-in eccentric aunts, uncles, mentors. Really, it takes a village. What does that look like in 2022? I realized a couple years ago that I grew up without ever seeing a joyfully single woman. Powerful, bold, elegant, purposeful, sourced in the infinite creative fire of the divine feminine. I like to change that for this upcoming generation and catalyze a community of those finding our way into a new way. So my heart's buzzing with vision for a gathering, a fellowship of blazing hearts, or those who need to be rekindled. Does this resonate with you? Join me for Singular, a workshop, playground, a brave conversation of hard-earned wisdom, a foundation of radical community. Join me at nicolemaline.com slash singular. That's S-I-N-G-U-L-A-R. It's putting the sing (laughs) in single. One new form, beloveding, is taking for me as this offering of singular. This word came to me as a balm and a challenge as I was thinking about all of the connotations in our culture around singleness, how so many of the structures and organizations and marketing and faith communities and school communities assume that the default status is partnership, is partnership and family And that in and of itself can make singleness feel like a kind of second-class citizenship in our culture or just a, an in-between, right? An in-between the way to partnership. And for me, this season has been a time of incredible sacredness. It's been a time of sure, like real ache and real loneliness and also profound friendship and freedom and a sense of adventure and possibility and more than anything, like I was talking about in that post, a deep and lifelong romance with spirit beyond relationship and into romance with spirit. And so I was thinking about this word singleness. This other word came to mind, singular, which of course it's just it's it's related to this word single but it has a power it has a strength it has a sacredness to it if something is singular it's one of a kind it's set apart it's incomparable and so when we think of ourselves those of us who are single in that state of singularity rather than singleness not only does it bring a sacredness to this time but it also brings a sacredness to the status, right? To the season. And it challenges us to make it a sacred season, to be, to make something of the fact that we're set apart, right? To make something that the, of the fact that we have a kind of freedom and accessibility to the rest of the world that you don't when you're partnered to some degree or other. So I have so much to say about this. I have so much to say about what I've learned on this journey of, becoming joyfully single, becoming powerfully single, and I can't wait to share it with you. One of my favorite questions of anything is, what does this want to become? And that's what I'm asking of this workshop, Singular. What does this want to become? A community? An ongoing conversation? I felt a calling to weave the wisdom of the last few years of unexpected sacred solitude, holding space, listening to desert channeling creativity, romancing spirit, 
redefining the beloved, that's really the central theme of this workshop, into this masterclass on becoming love. Not so much falling in love or falling out of love or looking for love, but becoming love. This masterclass, it's part ceremony, part conversation, where we will cultivate wisdom and tools to be wellsprings of love, regardless to whether we are partnered. So if this is calling your heart and you're partnered and you're wondering if this has any relevance to you, it does. We will tend our connection to spirit's infinite love and particularly the divine feminine. Again, as relevant to masculine as to feminine, tending our own divine feminine, which all of us have, and exploring our heart's guidance through guided journaling, as well as a wealth of recommended resources to deepen our practices. For unpartnered participants, Singular is a 90-minute masterclass in celebrating and amplifying your joy, freedom, and creativity as you refine your purpose and the focus of your love. For partnered participants, Singular is an invitation to strengthen your own relationship to Source and refine how you are showing up to your beloved. So to show up out of fullness rather than emptiness and need. We're listening to Krishna Dasa's beautiful record, Pilgrim of the Heart, which I've taken a deep dive into over the last couple weeks, where he tells the story of his spiritual journey, weaving heart opening, chanting, and songs throughout it. And he says this line, when we can love everyone, we are in love all the time. That's what I'm exploring in Singular. If it's calling to you, you can join me at nicolemoline.com slash singular and get immediate lifetime access to the video workshop and additional resources to drop into whenever you'd like. I cannot wait to hear how this journey helps you to reframe wherever you are, partnered, unpartnered, to revive how you are showing up to yourself, to spirit, to your partner, to revive how you are showing up to your dreams however those are taking shape, to hold space for them in a very sacred way, and to create your own ceremonies around this question of how you are feeling called to become love. And another magical invitation to beloveding the Altar Journeys Tulum Retreat this April 16th through 20th. I've just returned from Tulum, Mexico, where we had our February Altar Journeys Retreat, and it was pure magic. Tulum has always been a favorite place in the world for yogis. I mean, first of all, powder white sand beaches and an ocean of infinite shades of turquoise. But there's a sweetness and small scale to this place that has remained even as it's become more developed over the last few years. Our retreat resort is right on the beach and over a few days of walking out of a bedroom door into sunrise or sunset over the ocean, altar movement practices, meditation, guided journaling, cycling, deeply nourishing food, and heartfelt community, we reset the rhythms of our souls. I'd love to invite you to join me this April 16th through 20th for a deep reset and launch forward. The theme of this retreat, which feels so appropriate to Tulum, is beloved. We'll be exploring what it means, what it feels like to become love. I traveled to Tulum in January my first trip out of America since COVID began with this intention of exploring belovedness, to be so loved by spirit that I can't help but spill over that love to others, to be so enamored with the love of spirit that I readily see it in all other beings, and to ask some tough questions of that love, some heart-aching questions. My experience of God spirit, whatever mystery keeps interrupting our analytics of why it must not exist, is kind of like an elbow to the ribs. God elbows me in the ribs 
Do you know what I mean? Little synchronicities, coincidences, little nudges or breadcrumbs that speak the language of my soul and past experience that maybe only God knows. Little God winks. Never the whole story, the whole explanation, the whole prediction, the whole set of instructions. Just a little bit that invites my collaboration and creativity, that invites a conversation. I had an amazing experience of that I want to share with you. In Tulum, walking along the beach the first morning I was there to prepare a few days in advance of the retreat, I was walking up the beach and mostly just looking at the gorgeous ocean and beach combing and whatever shells and rocks and coral had turned up at my feet. And at exactly the right moment, I turned my eyes away from the ocean to the right to all of the resorts that are just sitting on the sand, little boutique resorts. And just at the right moment where I was walking right past one, and I saw a cluster of sleek indoor cycling bikes set up around a pool overlooking the ocean. This kind of dreamy cycling class setup that was, you know, looking right out to the water and the winds blowing. And I see some people walking around with headphones on like, like disco, like silent disco headphones. And my heart just exploded. I'm like, what is this? I have to find out. And so I walk in and the t- the timing was incredible because these bikes were only out for maybe about an hour and a half and then they were taken down. And so I was walking at exactly the right time and look to my right at exactly the right time. And I walk in and the manager of the whole operation is there and sweetest guy. He tells me everything that they're doing. I said, I'm leading a yoga retreat, you know, I'm leading an altar retreat down the beach. Is there any chance that I could, you know, maybe that we could maybe do a cycling class here? He's like, yes, we would love that. They had 18 bikes, which was a little bit, a little fewer than we would have needed for everyone to ride. But I thought, okay, I'll throw this out to everyone and just see if they're interested. And maybe, you know, if maybe a few people won't want to do it, we'll just see. And I passed a sign up around the first day of the retreat and 17 people wanted to do it. So there was exactly enough bikes for everybody. And we had just the dreamiest ride. Like all of us at the end of it, our cheeks were, our whole faces were aching because we'd been smiling so hard the whole time. And I, you know, I've, I've always thought there's something kind of silly about indoor cycling from the outside, right? And even, and it seems even sillier to be doing it on a beach in Mexico. Like, why are you riding a bike to nowhere in this incredible paradise, right? But I love that within the word nowhere are the words now here. And that's what the power of the bike has always meant to me is you are clipped in you are you can completely detach yourself from all of your surroundings you're safe you're not going to run into anything right you can close your eyes and just become one with the music and move in a rhythm where that your whole body is dropping to the bass beat and rising with the rising beat and you know what i mean you know what i mean if you've been on a bike and if you have found that instructor who takes you to places that open your heart right and so we went there in tulum and the whole time, I mean, I was, I think I was extra smiling because it just felt like one of those moments that God was elbowing me in the ribs and not just loving on me in a language that meant a lot to me, given my background as a Peloton founding instructor and iFit cycling instructor and Ironman and, and all that bikes have meant in my life, but was loving me in this way that I was able to spill over and share to others, right? By giving me this joy, I was able to offer it to everybody who was on that retreat. And that's what I mean. That's what I mean by by the God wink, right? By the little breadcrumb, the little portal opening into something that you love so deeply. And maybe only God knows how deeply you love this, how deeply that you couldn't have even have dreamed this up, right? Something so good that you couldn't even have dreamed it up. So what does it mean to beloved as a verb? To be loved. (laughs) 
I'm so excited to share with you that I recorded a ride, an uplift ride on the Alter platform at alter.nicolemaline.com of our Tulum cycling practice. So if you want to experience that ride, that playlist and the energy of it, more of the story, you can join there. The ride is called, of course, Expect Magic. We started off with this Trevor Hall song, Strength in One, which... I've been wanting so badly during all of COVID to play in a room with incredible humans on bikes and let it open our hearts. And I can't think of a better place (laughs) to have shared it. It's called Strength in One. And if you've ever ridden a warrior ride with me, you know, you know, you know. So what does it mean to beloved as a verb? To be loved, to be loved, be love, become love. The way we know a beloved is that they feel like home, at once infinitely familiar and also an infinite wilderness to be discovered, wondered over. I love this roomy poem called Meadow Sounds that gets at it especially the line, we've come into the presence of the one who was never apart from us. We've come into the presence of the one who was never apart from us. So being with the beloved, becoming love, is at once discovery, surprise, and also recovery. It's finding your baby blankie in a box in the attic with a return to Tulum in mind, with beloveding in mind, with singular and all that it has for us in mind. I wanna leave you wrapped in these words. Wrapped, W-R-A-P-P-E-D, like a guru in a tattered blanket of the love you beam to others. And wrapped, R-A-P-T, enthralled, entranced. Here's Rumi. We've come again to that sea. We've come again to that knee of sea coast no ocean can reach. Tie together all human intellects, they won't stretch to here. The sky bears its neck so beautifully, but gets no kiss, only a taste. This is the food that everyone wants, wandering in the wilderness, saying, Please give us your manna and quail. We're here again with the beloved, this air, a shout, these meadow sounds, an astonishing myth. We've come into the presence of the one who was never apart from us. So, beloveds, let's beloved, let's spread this stuff today. I'd love to invite you to join me in any of these offerings that resonate with you, the Singular Workshop, Tulum Retreat, or the Alter Together Membership, where I'm offering new movement practices, meditations, and live interactive mentorship sessions all around a new theme each month. February's theme of devotion has been an especially creative toolkit to practice becoming love. In March, we'll be exploring intimacy bringing depth and richness to all of our relationships. You can join with a free trial or experience individual altar rides and practices and meditations at altar.nicolemaline.com. As the world right now is erupting in some heartbreaking ways, from my heart to yours, I'm especially grateful for you and for the heartward community we're building toward creativity, strength, and service as we alter together.